Hey, welcome back. I am in sunny South Florida in the great South Florida Food Forest Project. I arrived safely and I am in my home state and I'm standing in front of a mulberry tree that I planted a few years ago. This is a variety from Gainesville. It's either called the 5th Street Mulberry or the 6th Street Mulberry. I get it mixed up. But uh, right now it's in dormancy. So I'm gonna show you two mulberry trees and how much fruit one of them is making and talk about the relative merits of both and what I plan to do with them. This is the variety from Gainesville. This is a full size black mulberry tree and it was discovered in Gainesville and propagated by the Edible Plant Project, which if you guys up there haven't checked out, you should check that out, it's a cool project. But right now it's in dormancy and you can see it's really sleeping. And the nice thing about a big tree like this is that it produces a lot of fruit. The bad thing about it is that it produces a lot of fruit where you can't actually reach it. So this thing needs a good pruning and that's my plan is to prune it down while I'm here. Kind of get it back under control and you can prune mulberries very heavily and it'll work well. This second tree right here, even though it's uh, coming up on 20 foot tall up there, is actually a dwarf ever bearing variety. As you can see this guy here. Look at this, it is in fruit now, right in the middle of March, towards the beginning of March, and it bears a lot of fruit. And it has a smaller leaf than the uh, Gainesville variety does. But the kids totally, totally love these things. And it's, and it's just gonna drop fruit all the time. This is dwarf ever bearing. This type is all over Florida been propagated extensively. I used to carry it in my nursery. It tends not to fruit very much the first year or two and then it starts to really take off. And you can keep it small at about hedge size. You know, it's it may be a dwarf, but it's not a dwarf, dwarf, dwarf. You really have to keep on top of it and prune it. It has a smaller growth habit than a full size, but it needs, uh, it needs a little extra care to keep it small. This is another one I probably prune, but I'm gonna wait until after it fruits because there is a lot of fruit up there. Might have to get a ladder and pick it. You get some black ones off the bottom? Good job. I have my nieces and nephews with me today on Mulberry Patrol. Get another one. I know they want to drop off. So as you can see, this tree was actually pruned. It was cut back. Um, it actually was broken in a hurricane, partly. It's been cut back here, and then it's grown out again. With mulberries, you can just turn around and chop this. I could I could chainsaw this thing to the ground or just saw through it, and it would grow back and it would make fruit the next year. They're great. And we're gonna have to cut this back, except it's got so many fruit on it, I don't want to do it. This one here is so big at this point that uh, it's really, um, it's not convenient at all. It looks cool. It might make a decent shade tree, except the structure's all wrong. I cut it down once before and then it's grown way, 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 way back. And since it's storming right now and it's not bearing anything, I'm gonna come out here and prune it up. And bonus points for any of you guys, if you recognize this, the most poisonous plant in the world, debatedly. Debatedly, is that a word? Anyhow, catch up with you guys soon. I'll give you a full tour of the food forest soon. Be sure to catch me at the Homegrown Food Summit, and if you wanna catch me at the South Florida Food Forest Project on the 16th, I will be doing an afternoon session. The morning session is full, but I'll put a link below the video. Thanks for watching. Until next time, may your thumbs always be green.